I just want to start off by saying that I really love your channel. It really just gives me life. So thank you for all the hard work you put into each of your uploads. I've got two stories for you today. And here's the first one. Back in 2018, my best friend and I were meeting at our, at the time, favorite coffee shop in the downtown area where we live. For some reason that day, we decided to go around 7.30 in the evening. It had been such a beautiful day, so we decided to sit outside, and since we hadn't been able to hang out in quite a while, we found ourselves still chatting, even once the coffee shop had closed. I'm not going to lie. I had never been in the downtown when things were closing and the atmosphere definitely changed. The shops were totally dark inside besides the lamp lights on the street, but for some reason we just continued to sit on the bench and chat. This is when we noticed a car with two girls pull up into a street parking spot that's right in front of the coffee shop, and though we took note of them, we didn't really think anything else of it. I remember looking at my phone and noting that it was now around 9.30pm and I remember thinking to myself, we shouldn't be out here, there is no one around except for these two girls that are just sitting in their car. Then out of literally nowhere, randomly appears this man. At first he just walks by us, stumbling around a little bit, but then he turns around and says, uh, hey, can I sit down? I need to ask you guys something. I know what you're shouting right now. Ladies, don't be an idiot. Tell him no. No, he can't sit down. But back then, I was such a pushover. Honestly, I was terrified of being standoffish to someone and then them lashing out at me. I honestly didn't know how to say no, so what did we do? One of the stupidest things we'd ever done. We looked at each other and told them, uh, Okay. He then sat in between us, which I thought was pretty weird, and then he just started saying, I need your help. I need your help. My best friend answered, Okay, what do you need? He seemed a little bit intoxicated, but he wasn't coming across like overly wild or anything, just like semi-creepy, but we just figured he was drunk and talking to two girls. He just kept responding and saying, I need your help. I need your help. And then he started saying, I have to show you something. You have to see this. And he started grabbing his backpack. I'm a nervous wreck at this point, so I was just a mess of giggles because I wasn't sure what he was about to pull out of the bag, and my gut feeling was we were not safe. My best friend looked at me and mouthed, it's time to go. But as we began to stand up, the guy literally took each of our arms and pulled us back onto the bench. As we both screamed out in shock, the two girls that were sitting in their car got out and the driver said, Hey guys, I'm sorry we're late. You ready to go to dinner? And without question, we got up and literally gave them each a hug and then proceeded to jump into their car. The girls turned the car on and locked the doors and we watched the man's facial expression become suddenly sinister. He then got up from the bench and walked up to the car window where we've got facial expressions of pure fear. We weren't holding ourselves together at all. He then proceeded to press his face to the window of the car, and then he just licked it. Then he backed up and went around the building, all the while just watching us. We thanked the girls profusely for coming to our rescue and they let us sit in their car for 10 minutes to make sure the guy was gone. We all got out of the car to say goodbye and then they were going to watch to make sure we got to our cars alright, but as we're giving them a hug goodbye, the guy came around the corner and rushed us, screaming this wild scream and sticking out his tongue in this very bizarre way. Kinda like when I say his tongue looked crazy long and reptile-like, that's truly the only way I can really explain it. He was grabbing at us but we managed to rush back into the car because it was right beside us and we piled in on top of the other group and locked the doors. He again approached the car window and growled at us. At this point, I was a mess of tears because the guy grabbed at me and was acting really insane. And so I felt unsafe and also I felt like an idiot for thinking that we could just walk to our car without the guy coming back for us. He then ran down the sidewalk screaming and growling. We couldn't believe all of this was happening. I'd never experienced anything like this. 
that this guy was either high off some form of drug or straight up possessed. We were all terrified. The girls drove us back to our car and we said goodbye in the car and then we got into our own car and we immediately left the area. I had several nightmares about the guy the next couple of nights and when we told our parents what had happened, my best friend's dad was actually pretty upset with us since we got into the car with girls that might have been in on the whole thing, which after thinking about it, he did have a point and I know he has a lot of wisdom too, but luckily the girls were not in on it and just had happened to have come into the area randomly and thank god they did because I don't know how this would have ended without them. I wish I could say that I could totally handle this differently today and I think there's aspects of this story that I would totally do differently, but I think at the end of the day you just never know how you're going to act until something creepy happens to you. So I'm just going to leave it with this, trust your gut. It's always better to be ultra safe rather than ultra sorry. I am thankful for those girls for being there at the time, but do be aware that people do work in groups and it probably wasn't the smartest thing for us to get into their car, let alone drive with them too. We did get very lucky and the girls were lifesavers. I guess I should just say, on top of listening to your gut, maybe don't be out in an area where the whole area is closed down and it's dark and there's nobody around you. That's the moral of the story. It could have all been avoided if we hadn't been sitting on that bench so late at night. I've been binge watching your videos for about the past month or so since I just recently discovered you and one of the stories you covered was very similar to an experience I had in the summer of 2015. It was all the talk amongst my family and friends and while it was pretty out there, it did change my perspective of life. How at one moment, you could just be sitting there relaxing in your room and next thing you know, you're in what seems to be like a plot of a movie. Although this isn't a plot of a film, it is going to sound like one because it's that crazy. So here's what went down on a summer night in July of 2015. I was home alone and I was playing Call of Duty with my friends on Xbox. I recall it being quite warm even at 9pm and so my air conditioning, the kind that attaches to the window and cools down just one room, is making a bunch of noise and I'm just lost there in the ambience. I did have my headset on, but I'm still able to hear noise coming from around me. This is something I bring up because during a break in between matches, my friends talking smack with others in the lobby, I began to hear what sounds like a megaphone and a helicopter flying nearby. I do live near a small airport, so hearing the sounds of helicopters isn't exactly uncommon, but a megaphone to add on top of that? Clearly this isn't coming from my video game. So I take off the headset and head over to the window that doesn't have the air conditioning unit. Muffled sounds of a voice. I now open the window out of curiosity and the sound of the helicopter becomes more prominent. Okay, well that's weird. I also see a searchlight. As I stood there staring at it for about 15 seconds, the megaphone sounds off again and I'm able to hear a voice calling out to us below that says, Please remain indoors at this time. This is the police, and we're searching for a man who has a gun. Man with a gun? That's all it took for chills to go down my spine. Here I was, with nothing but kitchen knives to possibly protect myself from an armed individual with a gun. Immediately I tell my friends that I gotta go, and then I begin the process of checking each of the windows and doors to make sure that they're all locked. First half of the house? No problem. Now I just needed to head to one of the back rooms, which is my parents' room, that overlooks the backyard, and then we'll be safe. As soon as I reach my parents' room, however, I get this sudden chill that tells me that something is really wrong. I don't know if it's just me or others get that tingly sensation when they sense possible danger, but I was feeling it, Mr. Krabs. Well, as I'm starting to make my way to the window, a shadow casts against the curtains. 
and to my worst fear, I hear the window open. My god, my parents had unlocked the window. Thanks a lot, guys. I now start to back up as the sounds of helicopters are even louder and the searchlight is shining through into the room as well. This is it. This is the guy. I now started to back away, slowly for some strange reason, since it's like I was just so in shock that my body was acting in slow motion and didn't want to move. Not sure how to best describe it, maybe some of you know. I now watched as a man in a ski mask pushes the screen of the window in and then jumps into the room. Indeed, he has a gun. I remember these moments very clearly. The guy sees me standing there with a kitchen knife in one hand and my phone up to my cheek on the other, and he says, Shh, I'm not going to hurt you. That was all it took for my body to unlock from slow motion, and without any hesitation, I booked it out of the room and dove out the front door toward my front yard. By this moment, cop cars are pulling up to my house, and with my hands up, I exclaim, He's in there. He's in my house. I was now ushered to safety as the police then set up a perimeter around my home. It took about 30 minutes, as I was now with a neighbor down the street, but eventually they do get the man to surrender, and he was soon taken into custody. I was questioned by officers, and after giving my side of the story, I called my parents, who were pretty shocked by the whole thing. But I mean, could you really blame them? I mean, there I was, their only kid, face to face with an armed intruder. You can imagine they felt extremely guilty for years for somehow not locking that window, but I forgave them since it's not every day you expect somebody to just break into your house as they try to hide from cops. I blame myself for not being faster about checking all the windows. We laugh about it now when I tell the story of the time I came face to face with an armed man with a gun, but back then it was no laughing matter. So that's my crazy story of the time I came face to face with danger. To this day, I still wonder if that man would have done anything to me, but these days when it comes to criminals, you can never be too safe, even in your own house. Isn't it kind of sad that you can't go out of your house anymore without having to worry about somebody who is looking to cause you harm? It is very unfortunate. And these last couple of years, I've had it really bad. This one incident that I want to write into you about is exactly the reason why I now have a concealed license to carry. Thank God that I've never had to shoot somebody with my gun, but the saying of it's better to be safe than to be sorry is very true. So this is what happened. It was April 2020, and we were deep into the lockdowns. Lots of places were shut down. Minus places like hospitals or grocery stores, and people were encouraged to stay at home and not really interact with others, which looking back on that, it was really sad. However, being really into fitness meant that I was unable to go to the gym. It was a shame since I didn't own a treadmill at the time, and I was going to the gym to use the treadmills since I had a previous creepy experience with someone when I was running on one of the local trails and I didn't want to go there anymore. I tried doing workouts at home, but living in a small apartment by myself, there was only so much running space I had in there, so I did try doing some runs around my apartment complex, but I soon grew bored of that as well. It was then that I got the idea of going back to the trail where I had that experience with the creepy guy. He was catcalling me and following me. Surely that was just a one-time deal from a few years ago and I wouldn't encounter him again. Well, sure enough, no signs of that creepy guy, thank goodness. But there was something else that was very different. The people. All these people who never came to the trail suddenly came here and were now filling up the entire walkway. It almost felt like you were at Disneyland. Seriously, it was that bad. And while people are social distancing and all that stuff with their masks, what upset me the most is how people had no trail etiquette whatsoever. It made running that much more difficult, but I eventually got used to it, even if it meant I had to slow down at points because people weren't walking in a straight line and to the side of the road, like you're supposed to do, so you can allow runners and people on bicycles to pass by you. Anyway, 
After a few times of coming to the trail at different hours, I realized that Thursday and Friday before 8am was actually perfect. Just that right amount of people where you aren't completely alone, but also enough people where you'll be able to run without interruption by bumping into them. And so, with that said, I completed my first two miles with no problem, but I did stop to tie my shoes, as well as to call my mom since I figured by now she was awake. I wanted to ask her regarding a recipe for a dish that I was looking to make when I got back home for breakfast. And so, I stood to the side of the trail just talking to her, and while I was distracted, I could clearly hear the sounds of footsteps behind me. Thinking that it was a runner, I turned around just to look, and what I see sent chills down my spine. It's this homeless looking man, and he has a small pocket knife up to his face, and he's pointing it directly at me. I didn't even get a chance to say anything to my mom, as this freak then tells me not to take any sudden movements, and that he wanted me to take off my clothes, right there and then. No kidding. Clearly, he wasn't all there in the head. So I now began to run, as I can then hear him begin to give chase. Yeah, here in broad daylight on this trail, bear in mind. Now I've never seen this guy in my entire life, so that's what made it really weird. That run, which seemed to have lasted for an eternity, finally ended about 20 seconds later, when I ended up waving down a group of runners ahead of me, who also appeared to be taking a break. I turned around, and this is when I saw the man that had been chasing me, stopping, and then putting the little knife into one of his pockets. Before now, he does that kind of hands-up thing that Mr. White did in Breaking Bad when he said, You got me. He then turns around to run the opposite way, but not before all of us have a perfect description of him. We call the police to tell them about the man with a knife, and about 10 minutes later, police officers join us at the start of the trail so that they could take our statements. They, unfortunately, as far as I know, never found him, and it angers me to think that he might still be out there. But part of me is hopeful that either he was arrested or or he turned a new leaf in life and realized, maybe it's not a good idea to go after people with a knife. One can hope, I guess. So if I can end this submission of mine with the following, it's going to be this. Make sure that you have something with you to defend yourself at all times, whether it be pepper spray, a knife, or if you do have a license to carry, a gun, it's going to be very helpful. Now, yes, I was able to run away, but what about those of you who can't run, or who might be elderly? What about situations where they aren't just after your wallet or your phone, and maybe they're after, let's say, your body? You're not just going to stand there and say, oh yeah, I'm all yours, do what you want with me. Heck no. So, please be smart. Protect yourself, by all means necessary. I used to work at an AM PM in the early 2000s, and I had many things happen to me that I thought would be worth sharing here with the Creepy Fox podcast. Hopefully none of you out there have ever had a deal with some of the things I'm about to describe, because they're honestly quite freaky, and they will leave you in a state of shock. Here's the first creepy experience. So, one night, I'm working pretty late, and I'm just there at the cashier box, as I'm trying my best to keep myself up, since currently there was nobody inside the building. Well, out of completely nowhere, I began to hear what sounds like arguing coming from just outside the store. I told myself, oh, must be some of the homeless people that roam the area, and they must be fighting amongst each other. There was one time that I had to kick a homeless man out of the AMPM because he was trying to grope one of the female customers that I had been helping. So, a bit annoyed, I just ignored it, until of course I saw the source of said arguing. A homeless man. But here's the thing. He's naked. And he's got a hold of a hammer. Yeah, not even any underwear to hide his junk. Just like, hey world, look at this. All jokes aside, he now struts his way into the store and stares directly at me as he then begins to threaten me and say that I was here to do experiments on him. Yeah, no way man. More like, I'm just here trying not to fall asleep, but thanks for waking me up anyway. 
I try to tell him it's all good and please just relax, but then I remember very clearly he called me a lizard person and said that I was some sort of reptilian that was going to experiment on his body, just like I said. Ugh, here we go. Well, I did not deal with him since he did have a hammer and kept saying he would kill me first before I did anything to him. I got on my store phone and I began to dial for the police. As the man starts to then push displays around, he turns back at me and then I remember he said, You're calling more of the lizard people, aren't you? Then, without any warning whatsoever, he makes a mad dash toward me as he then tries to climb over to get to me. I got to the nearest item I could use for self-defense, which was a broom, and then I began to back away as I tell him that he needs to relax. All the while, I was sure the person on the other end of the phone is like, what's going on there? Clearly, not fun and games. Eventually, I am able to fight him off, and he just ends up tucking his tail between his legs and walking out of the store, but not before calling me a whole bunch of other names. Police did actually get there as he's walking off property, and I made sure to point him out. Although, looking back, it's not going to be that difficult to find a man who's got no clothes on. Needless to say, they arrested him, and they used the security footage from the store to see what exactly he had done. I wish there was some way I would be able to show you that footage, but considering this was almost 20 years ago, there's no way that footage still exists, so you'll have to take my word for it. So that's one of my creepy experiences. Here is another one. Although just a heads up, this doesn't involve an encounter with a creepy person, but it was still very scary. It left me quite shaken. Also this happened at that AM PM. Now the reason I wanted to also include this story was because you shared your own story on the previous episode, which was the scary hospital stories video. I will say creepy fox. You're very brave for sharing that because I can imagine having to relive those events must have been pretty traumatizing, especially when I hear of the way you described your story. I'm just glad that you and your sister weren't harmed and I really wish you wouldn't have had to go through that. But yeah, the thing is, something similar happened to me. Again, it's me working late at night, but this time I'm helping out some customers who are purchasing some late night junk food. Out of completely nowhere, I had turned to my left, which overlooks the parking area. And no kidding, it's like everything went into slow motion. I see headlights getting closer and closer to the front doors. However, it's not like someone was just approaching to park and then come in to do whatever purchases they wanted to do. No, instead I stood there as this truck comes plowing into the store, completely taking out displays and racks of food and snacks. Finally, the truck ended up stuck inside the refrigerator section. I pretty much stood there frozen watching in this state of disbelief as all of these thoughts had begun to go through my head. Was the lady I had seen back there hit? Was the driver dead? Was I going to have a heart attack? Finally, what snapped me out of it was when I saw the woman in question come walking out, looking like she had just seen a ghost, but walking okay. The couple people who I was helping waved their hands in front of my face, and they were able to get me back to a normal state of mind. At this moment, all the noise around me, which had seemed to have gone silent, finally returns as I finally snapped out of it and I began to call the police. This happened about a month after the incident with the creepy naked guy. They knew who I was, and within minutes, police and paramedics are arriving on scene. The emergency responders did end up pulling out a single male driver from the vehicle, and he was actually still alive, which is crazy because when I remember the damage the vehicle had suffered, I still wonder how he made it out in one piece. Long story short, I learned that the man had been extremely drunk, and because of his actions, he had been hospitalized, but then he was later released and jailed for driving under the influence. Turned out he actually had a warrant for his arrest for other crimes he had committed, so that's pretty crazy. Anyway, the AM PM closed for a little while, so I did end up taking a little break from work as I tried my best to move on from the incident. I did eventually, and while I did have some more creepy things happen to me, nothing came close to that night. A truck drove right into the AM PM while I was on the clock. 
I do apologize if the details in this story are a little bit vague. This happened 20 years ago, and though it was a moment to remember, the small details really are blurred. Growing up, my family was a full-on baseball family. My dad was a coach ever since I was a little girl, and two of my brothers played from t-ball all the way through high school, and one brother almost got into the minor leagues after college, but chose instead to be a family man. I loved attending baseball games, not really for the game, which was always long and always hot and muggy and really boring just sitting on the bench, but I loved it more because I had a ton of friends who also didn't like sitting and watching the game, and we would play on the playground next to the ball field and catch fireflies. I remember one evening, one of the older brothers came over to the swing set during one of the games, and he began telling us a story that a little girl had gotten shot by her stepfather right at this park and that once it starts to get dark, her spirit comes out to play. I always had a wild imagination and this story really did terrify me. After trying to play a little bit longer on the swings, I just couldn't stop thinking about the little girl, so I left the group and headed back to the benches. I remember the older brother laughing at me as I walked away because I was so scared. The game went on and I was incredibly bored but I felt safer being by the parents. But one of my friends came and got me after a while and asked if I wanted to walk down this little trail that she had found. By this time it had gotten dark and the field lights were blasting, so there was a lot of light around the field, but the trail she wanted to go down didn't have any lights along it. Just a street alongside of the woods that would shed a little light when a car would drive past it with their headlights on. I have no idea why we thought this was a good idea, but we started our way into the trail, not a single parent noticing at all. As we walked further away from the field and further down the trail, I just kept thinking about the little girl and feeling like she was going to pop out of nowhere, and I kept asking my friend if we could go back, but she wanted to go further down the trail instead. As we continued walking, we turned this bend where we could no longer see the field and the parents. And I just knew that we were too far, so I kept looking back debating on if I should just go, but I couldn't leave my friend. Then out of nowhere she just stops, and at first I had no idea why, but then I saw it. A blue tarp set up like a tent and trash all over the place. Beer bottles, cigarette butts, and piles of fast food bags. It was a mess. We just stood there staring at the tent, when all of a sudden, we heard branches crunching somewhere in the woods. We just booked it tripping over each other and not looking back. We now reached the benches and ran up to her mom telling her exactly what we saw and that we had heard somebody walking in the woods. I have to give her mom credit for actually believing us and taking us seriously. She then proceeded to tell a few of the dads and they went down the trail. I guess one of them had a flashlight because they looked inside the tent and this is where they found more garbage, but also they found two hunting knives. Granted, this could have just been a homeless person who had hunkered down on the trail and just had some knives for protection. It could have been. But the parents felt incredibly uncomfortable because not only is there a tent set up right next to a children's ballpark, but they had seemed to be approaching two little girls. If that was the person walking toward us. And needless to say, the cops were actually called to investigate, and as I was just 8 years old, I have no idea if anything actually came out of it. But kids started having a parent chaperone from then on whenever we played at the park. I know this story ends kind of unclimactically, but when I tell you the sincere fear I felt that evening running from the unknown thing in the woods, knowing without a shadow of a doubt we both heard something approaching us, it was a feeling I won't ever forget, and it really defined how I saw baseball games from then on. I feel very lucky that we didn't end up meeting the person in the woods, and it's just a reminder that even 20 years ago, it wasn't the safest thing to let your kids just roam around whenever they wanted to. You never know the intentions of people out there, and it's best to just proceed with caution. With that said, stay safe everyone, and thank you Creepy Fox for everything you do. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and leave a comment telling me what you all thought. 
and subscribe and turn on notifications if you're brand new. Also, make sure to check out our song, Make a Start. You can find it on Apple Music, Spotify, or even here on YouTube. Go to my YouTube channel and check it out underneath the Creepy Fox topic section. Also, consider grabbing some Creepy Fox merchandise, which you can see right below the video. And if you want early access to brand new videos with no advertisements, as well as exclusive narration videos not available to anyone else, consider becoming a channel member. Which, speaking of, I'd like to go ahead and give them all a shout out. Thank you to Robbie, Bo, Spunky the Nutcase, Rice and Beans, Scott, Sean, Corey, Linz, Maribel, Medu Satil, and our newest member, Silent. Thank you also to the regular viewers who watch the uploads, like, comment, and share them with their family and friends. I appreciate and love every single one of you. Thanks once again for stopping by, and I'll catch you all on the next one. Take care, and have yourself an amazing day.